but hello guys and welcome this Sunday here again. So long time no video, been a bit busy like in August. I was traveling first to Japan, I was there for a bit over a week, then I gone back for one week, then I go to first Los Angeles where we practice with Ghost and then the New York as well, so that was in total two weeks. So actually most of August I was not home, so that kind of like hindered my ability to make new videos. Also university started, so I've been more than more with that. But the idea with this video is pretty simple, and I know how interesting it will be to watch. I know how to make it like mind-blowingly interesting to watch, but if I could edit, I'd make it, maybe add some explosions or something, but I don't really have the knowledge for this, so you are stuck to watching my face and this spreadsheet here. And what is the spreadsheet? The spreadsheet is what we use to practice for LISS. So, really, if I had to put like a topic for this video, I would probably say how to prepare for a tournament with limited map pool. And I'm not saying that this is like the optimal way to do it. I'm not saying that you know you just do this and there's no better way to do it. And we have reached the peak of practicing in this game. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that this is how we did it, and I'm sure this is still better than what most teams do. And I think you might find a broad shot as this useful. And also uh, if you're just interested in the spreadsheet itself, then I will be linking it in the description below, so you can go take a look. But okay, just to be clear, with LISS, we got a map list beforehand. Uh, it was 18 maps, 18 maps, so map plus mode. And when we know this, it's of course easy to practice because we can just focus on these specific modes. But then again, it's gonna be the same for other teams, that other teams also are gonna be more prepared, more ready for these maps. And of course in scrims you're gonna be playing the same players as well, so it's gonna be harder to surprise them anymore. And that's kinda of like something you can't avoid with the scene not being so big. That you get always just choose your scrim opponents. But just to walk you through like how we did this, how we started preparing. So for us, of course, the really nice thing that was made possible by Ghost was that we could be physically in the same location. This won't be the case with many teams, but for us it was the case. And what we could do is that we could actually like sit down and talk over these maps like, hey, say Sturgeon, CPR, Splatson, what are you gonna do here, guys? And we go over what weapons are we gonna play here. So here our first idea, this is us, we changed almost everything later, but this was just the first idea, just so we are on the same page. But the first idea was Ersa on T-Tech, Sendo on Custom Blaster, Dude on Custom Duelist Squelcher, and Brian on Charger. I think Dude's weapon might have changed later, but again, we changed a lot. And then this is not like small ideas, like this is not like comprehensive strat to how to play the map, but just some basic ideas, how should we, how should we hold or push in the map, how should we retake or defend the map. And again, we changed this one. You know, just the idea that, first of all, we have talked about it a bit. So if you're not physically in the same location, say, okay, wow, well, it's gonna be Inkstorm, whatever, Inkstorm number, unspecified. So what you could do with your teammates when you know, especially if you know like four people who are gonna be participating in the tournament, what you could do is sit down in VC and just say, hey guys, it's a stadium map, so let's go over the maps, let's figure out somewhat what we want to do there, so you at least are executing some kind of game plan. Of course Splatoon is a very dynamic game, like you're not gonna be able to follow a strict game plan in the same way you can do in some other games, because there's so many different variations to different situations. But just it's you know general idea and in some ways don't really change depending on the situation. So just so that players have an idea of what they are supposed to be doing. Like it's just a basic basic idea. So I think that was still useful. Like, I didn't actually return to this and like edit this or anything like that after we did the initial. Like, this was just our first idea. And to us, what we do in Screams, we kind of like don't write down. But to me, it was pretty useful to write it down for the first time. At least, so there's like some basic idea. You can see on some map combos, we didn't really 
see the necessary to write anything down. And okay. This is probably the more interesting part of this. This is the main spreadsheet that I used. So this is every screen we played in California. So you can see we played 200 and um, almost 250 maps altogether. And uh, if you can guess, well, I'm guessing most people can guess, but I'm sure at least someone can guess. Uh, w green is a uh, map win and uh, L red is uh, map loss. So basically this is how we mainly decided what to practice, right? So we have the win percentage here. This is like total win percentage across all the scrims we did. Uh, five last scrims, how did we do it in those. Times played and times played in five last scrims. So the basic idea here is that we should be practicing the maps that we are not good at. So maps where our win percentage is low, right? On the other hand, we should probably also be playing maps even that we have won. For example, there's some maps we never lost, like Sniper Canals Platforms where we lost this in the tournament. But we never lost it in scrims. Uh, so still, you know, I think still, even if you win it every time convincingly, I think even then you want to play that list every once in a while. But that's basically what we did was we focused on the maps we weren't so good at. So for example, like, good example here would be Inkblot TC. If I can find it, Inkblot TC. So you can see there was a lot of red when we go back, compared to other modes, a lot of red. But then there started being more green, because we grind this mode, we try out different things, we figure out what works for the map. <clears throat> so we went through several iterations of several weapons that we could play for the map, and several game plans. And in the end, in tournament, this was a map we never lost. So in scrims, this was a big problem for us, we kept losing it, but since we get playing it and we kept talking about how to how to improve that map, then eventually we did, and in tournament we never lost it, so at least here is some part where it worked. In retrospect, I would have played maps more that we were winning. I think like we lost pit splat zones, for example, in the grand finals. I would probably play pit splat zones a bit more even if our win percentage was pretty good. But to me, this is like how I decided, like we start a scrim. How I decide what maps to play, two criteria. First, something that we have lost a lot recently. Second, something we haven't played a lot recently. But more about the one than the first one than the second one. And that's basically it. The colors here is just to show which maps are for semi-finals and grand finals. So of course you should focus the maps for the rounds that you expect to be playing. But I'll drop the sheet, the link to the sheet in the description below, and once again, I'm not saying this is like the ultimate version of spreadsheet, and that's it. GG. I'm saying this is what we did, and maybe it's something, you could get some ideas on how to practice yourself, I don't know. Um, it's I think it's always useful to keep track of what maps you're winning if you're practicing for a format like this, instead of just like playing whatever. And maybe last thing I could say, because this is something that always has a bit different opinions, but repeating maps. So repeating maps, okay, so <laughs> maybe, okay, this is probably like the, like the right answer to this, but here's my personal opinion. I don't really like repeating too much, because if you want to repeat maps, we can do it the way I explained, which is that when we start a new screen, we switch opponents, then we repeat the map with a bit different, like fresh mindset and different ideas and a bit different opponent. Some people do the stuff where they play up to five times the same map, I think that's kind of extreme. I can see it when the map list is this small, I can see it. If you can find an opponent who wants to play like Hotel Rainmaker 5000 row, well, you found quite the gem of a training partner if that's the case. But to me, for most parts, yeah, repeat sometimes when like instantly we recognize, okay, here's what we did wrong. Let's try it right away. That's when we repeat. But I wouldn't get into the cycle of repeating map without changing anything too much in the same scrim, like, like, why? Like, I don't know. And yeah, it's a real thing that people kind of get bored of replaying the same map and they just like, even if they win, they change their comp completely because they're bored. <laughs> like, really this happens. But I, I would say this is like, 
very professional stuff but you know it happens that sometimes people get bored and they switch off because of that and then it's not realistic practice anymore but yeah uh, feel free to ask questions I won't promise to answer but I'll be reading the comments and I'll be answering if I have time and uh, hopefully this is useful to someone uh, it's kind of like a rambly video but yeah um, I don't know, keep playing Splatoon and something, see you. If you have ideas for videos, let me know. I'll, I can fulfill some ideas, some wishes. Alright, bye bye bye, enjoy your week.